right, we're here. Oh, wow. We're here in the control room. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah. Guys, you're you're watching, uh, well, this is the very first episode of the podcast called Carnival of Ink, which is yeah. the podcast about the tattoo convention, Carnival of Ink. Which, tattoo Tuesdays. Tattoo Tuesdays. Yeah. Tattoo Tuesdays. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right. So, wait, what? That's not right. This is right. Yeah. Um, we're here in our virtual tattoo shop to bring you information about the Carnival of Ink. Also, some cool tattoo, uh, I don't know. Just stuff, stuff that's going on, man. Yeah, just, just stuff, stuff that's going on. Anyway, thank you all for, for joining us here. I see we got a few viewers already. Uh, shout out to Okie Doke. I saw that you're, uh, you said, what's up? So, what's up? I still don't have the emote thing going on, and I see what you tried to do there. So, I just have to do it myself. You know, what's up? What's up? I don't know how to do it. So, um, yeah. Where does it display your amount of viewers at on this? What? Oh, yeah. um, well, up here. Oh, okay. I and see then it. I, I can also I, do no, this. No, 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 no. I just needed to see it. So then, whenever, you know, if I'm boring people and I see it go down to, you know, well, very, well, very low single digits, you know, then uh -huh. I, I know I know what to. You don't have to put it up there. It's all good. No, it's I good. I can see it in the corner. Well, I forgot to put it there, so uh, it oh, goes well. there. And there we go. Okay. So we got Tra Trace Ombres hanging out with us. S speaking of, um, it's Batman's birthday. It is Batman's birthday. Um, so he's probably, and, and it's Taco Tuesday, which is amazing because he has tacos on his mind pretty much every. This man ate nine different variations of tacos in nine days in a row and then went and got a ta ta or taco tattoo to, comm to commemorate it. That's right. He took yeah. the tour of tacos. That's a lot of alliteration. Yeah. And that's a lot yeah. of taco meat. What kind of tacos did he eat? Were they just the beef tacos? No, no, or no, no. He, he went and like did the like. The lengua taco? He went and did like nine, uh, like fish tacos. He did all, like nine different variations. All the different kinds days. of tacos, basically. Yeah. Hey, Chronic Warrior 17, that's uh, that's mm. Tin Man Barnes. That's Q. Who? Q is watching. Oh, what's My up, personal Q? trainer, Q. Q personally trained me today uh, for the very first time. I will be uh, not frail coming up in the next few months or next year. I don't know how long He's it takes. He's not going to be sensitive anymore. I'm not going to be sensitive anymore. I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm going to have i uh, I'll be able to lift a car and also to kick a football without falling down. <clears throat> Maybe I'll get a tattoo to commemorate that whenever I get muscles. You could get a tattoo of a muscle on your muscle? Yeah. Hey, what was your first tattoo, Joe? <laughs> My first one was whenever I was like 17, and it was a tribal band. Okay. Um, and it's it needs – it's I, I've had it gone over a couple times, and I've just gotten to the point where I'm like, you know, fuck this tribal piece, so I'm going yeah. to – uh, eventually, I've already got something that I'm going to cover it up with. It's just, you know, tribal's all black, you know, so it, yeah, takes, it takes something big and large to, you know, to cover it up. Um, but I know that they can do a lot of uh, black and grays and add a lot of white to be able to yeah. pop it out. And, you know, it'll, it'll happen. Um, I've already confirmed with uh, Tim Richardson what my next piece is being done by him. Um, so Tim Richardson is going to have art on your body? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, actually, dude. it's even better. What? Um, David Frizzell's okay. art piece of 2016, uh -huh. that, that one he drew up, if anybody knows who he is, he does the album covers for Avenged Sevenfold and Seven Dust. Nice. Um, he was one of our art vendors for a while, and then it got to the point where we had, we raised our prices, and uh -huh. artists, you know, struggling artists, they can't afford, you know, what a, a tattoo artist can pay, because, I mean, tattoo yeah. artists can do one tattoo and pay for their whole weekend. Yeah, you, you know, know it's, where, it, a tattoo convention and an art art convention are totally right, different right, right. Things. And you know, I messaged him and told him, I said, hey, you know, I've got this artist that's going to uh, do that piece that you drew up for our logo, and was it 2016? I think it was. Yeah. Um, which is a really cool piece, um, and I said I'm going to have uh, Tim Richardson do it on my side. So then I messaged Tim and I said, "Hey Tim, here's this piece I want you to do on my side." And he's like, "Sick, let's do it." Is that the one of the woman and she's like, she's got the uh, the top hat on uh -huh. and it's like swirled around with yeah yeah, it's it got reported for nudity on Facebook. I don't know it, how many times. It's not nudity. Well, she had cleavage. Oh, okay. You know, and it was mine. So I mean, you know, yeah. people just love to hate. People you know? like to just report. Oh, they're keyboard warriors out there. That's okay. There's a lot of keyboard. Obviously, they yeah. like me in their mouth. That's true. They, you know. That seems to be something that goes <laughs> around. Oh, man. So, 
So, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of... Uh, I've seen some new shops opening up. Oh, dude, we've had... Um, <clears throat> in Springfield alone, um, I want to say that there's been five studios open up, a couple of them being private um, studios. Yeah, um, including what? Uh, Underground Tattoo. Underground Tattoo. The- there's another one that's called Underground uh, uh-huh. Gallery. Okay. Um, which is... Um, um, Megan and Brian Biggers. Okay. Um, huge fans of me. Um, and um, uh, then there's the um, the Tattoo Coven. Tattoo Coven. And then yeah. um, there's a, God. What was the other two? I don't know. I mean, there, there's quite a few. There's, of there's them quite a few of them. I mean, it's it's. I, I I hear people being like, you know, we're getting oversaturated in this market here. You know, well, you know. Um, how many times did you go to a tattoo studio and you want something done right then and there and they're, they're, they're booked up? Yeah. You can't. You know, I mean, there's, you got to talk to them ahead of time and get it scheduled up. I mean, uh, very rarely do I hear any more of people, you know, going in as a group or like, you know, bachelorette parties or bachelor parties or whatever. And they all go in and get a, you know, the same tattoo all together, you know? Yeah, I think that happens probably a lot less than people think that yeah, it Yeah, it, it is. I mean, yeah. hell, I mean, my artist, uh, you know, uh, I went and got my fingers done. And the reason why I got them done is because Batman was in there getting something done. And then finally, he, you know, when he was done, he was like, you want me to do your fingers? And I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, yeah, go ahead and do it. So the guy just went ahead and threw my lines in. Okay, here, show it up. Get, put it up to the camera so we can see. He, he got these lines that says, if you if you look, it says read between the lines. Right. I mean, that's really the, the yeah, statement. On both, on both hands. You know, because so. for a long time, I, you know, every picture that was on Facebook, it was me flipping the camera off. Mm-hmm. And I've had a lot of people, even uh, I talked to a sponsor and he was like, that we had for Springfield. Uh-huh. And he was like, yeah, I went through your profile. Boy, you like to flip people off a lot, don't you? And I was like, well, it's just kind of a way to say hello. And he's like, yeah, yeah it's California goes, howdy. But, you know, the thing is, is you got to stop and think about it. You know, sponsors, money, you know. Yeah. Um, so you got to kind of start doing things a little differently. That's why I'm delegating a lot. Uh, a lot more with what I do, um, like, you know, as far as host, as far as yeah. sales, as far as design, as far as, you know, uh, trying to take the responsibility off of me. So then I can go and book locations. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if I because in the more locations I can book, the more I can trust that the people I have can, you know, knock out and do what they need to do. Yeah. It's just growing and growing. You know, it started out with uh, way back in the day. I mean, your first convention was what? The Freak Arts Expo. Freak Arts Expo. Yeah. Expo, And that was in 2013. Uh, we had uh, a total of four studios with about seven artists. Wow. Um, and the funny thing is, is one of those artists uh, was Jay Borg. Wow. So Jay's been there Jay's from been, the very beginning. Jay's been with me since day one. Wow. And then now he's, you know, since he's married uh, Kendall... Uh, we now have Jay and Kendall uh, that attend every one of the shows. and mm. um, Phenomenal ba- tattoos. Ba- basically, whenever they show up and they put a piece into the categories, you'll hear most of the tattoo artists say, fuck, it's the Borgs. Yeah. Fucking Borgs. You know, and, I mean, and it, it's true because, I mean, she's been tattooing for, I think, four years now, maybe, four years. And she's phenomenal. I mean, she's took them uh, best in show in Springfield. In, in, um, in here, we're walking through. This is our virtual tattoo studio here. I'm taking a walk through here. That's that's Kendall Borg up yeah, that's, there. That's Kendall. Yeah. That's her work right there uh, on the wall. That That's the geometric flowers. Yeah, yeah. And that took that award right there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's from the, the uh, Queen City Carnival of Ink back in April. Yeah, that is. This, uh, yeah, because that's uh, Sammy, her... I think every piece on Sammy is uh, done by Kendall. Wow. And, I mean, some beautiful pieces that she does. And her color saturation is just phenomenal. I mean, like, she is like... It. It's just... It looks like a soft photo. It's yeah, she's beautiful. amazing. She really is. I love it. Let's see Let's see some other things that we have here. Frank's been waiting for his appointment for a while. Oh, fuck his, Frank. I know. He'll wait. Oh, looky there. There's, That's... Uh, that's Anthony Anthony Carnes and uh, Tim Richardson actually right there. Um, Anthony Carnes is uh, uh, he owns o, uh, OG Tattoo, uh-huh. and then uh, they just bought uh, Lady Liberty, um, and they're they're opening up that other lo- are basically keeping that location open. They're just vamping it up a little bit. Uh-huh. Here I'm gonna go into fly mode for a second. 
and get out of that. I, I got stuck inside the sink because, like every good tattoo shop, you have to have a really nice sink with, uh, you know, soap and. Oh my God! Towels. Look at there. That's that's Cat Spencer and Weird Harold. What? Yeah. Look okay. At those guys. Now, now, can you tell which one's Weird Harold? <laughs> Not at that all. Was, that was when they won best overall male first and second place because uh, we f we the first time we did that category was in Colombia uh -huh. uh, last year. And uh, even though we had, we had overall male and overall female, we had a few in the overall female category, but we had none in the overall male. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember... You know, Weird Harold's like, let's do it. And he went and grabbed Cat, and they went ahead, and that's whenever Harold stripped down to his boxers and pulled his boxers up into his butt crack for the judges to judge him. And yeah, yeah, that's Weird Harold though for you. He's he's a he's he is a very unique character, and he's he's very talented. I mean, the dude loves skulls. He does here. great with skulls. Tattoo magazine. Oh, speaking of that, y'all might want to get the next issue of uh, Tattoo Magazine because there's a uh, convention that's being covered in it. Yeah, you might know it as the Carnival of Ink. Exactly. And, uh, of course, that's featuring photos by uh, Ernie Bustamante. Yes. Ernie is badass. He is a <clears throat> badass. I've, I've, um, you know, definitely one of the, the people who... You know, his his energy brought a whole lot to the entire party. You know what I mean? Well, the, the thing is, is, you know, he's been doing this for years. And he's highly respected, not just because of who he is and who he works for, but he's highly respected by the tattoo community because of the fact of how he is. Yeah. He is just an overall genuine individual. Um, he, he, he He's got a great eye for, for art. Um, and just the overall personality is just a great person to have around. Yeah. You know, like when we were doing uh, when we were doing the award ceremony, um, instead of being, you know, we had a we had a, a little girl that kept popping her head through the curtain, and instead of being completely rude, what did he say? He said, "Whose who's <laughs> whose fetus is this? Whose fetus is this?" Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that kid was running around. And well, yeah, yeah. No, I totally get it, and. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, we are going to start selling leashes. Oh by no the no hour. no 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 no! There will be leashes at the door, and I will. There will be a sign there stating that if we have to come and give you one of these, um, that's your last warning. Yeah, you, um, your child needs to not be unattended at this. Let me put it to you this way: My son that's has been mention. going to these since the beginning. Oh gosh, he was five whenever I did my first one, and even at five, he knew what not to do and what what to do you know and i mean a, a lot of you know kids if you don't set the boundaries for them they're going to do whatever they want to do mm -hmm. and this is where we have a lot of issues is because i want it to be a family friendly event mm -hmm. without a doubt i want people to be able to bring their kids and be able to show their kids that this is a, a society and a community that is full of love and full of you know people supporting each other but whenever you've got you know, some parents just letting their kids just roam free and do whatever. I mean, I my son roams free, but you most of the time my son is usually sitting somewhere with his gaming system, or on his phone or whatever, or he's hanging out with Verona because he's in love with her. Yeah, yeah, um, he loves Verona. I think. Yeah, I mean her, her and Kara, he loves them to the death. Um, but I mean, the point is, is I I don't want a couple bad eggs to ruin it for everybody else yeah but bottom line is is the only way that you can make a point across is sometimes to be an asshole about things so yeah. we will have leashes so <laughs> if, if they if if i have to give a warning i'll walk up and i will hand a leash and say hey we need you to have this and this is your last warning and also the leashes will be available to consenting adults so <laughs> that's a different show that's a different show <laughs> that's a different show oh, yeah man. i'm trying to find some footage of verona here um, oh, during her, the sideshow performance? Yeah, here, let's... Verona! Okay, this is Verona. She's getting ready to get hit by this uh, axe. No, no, no. No, She's, it's, okay, a it's a sledgehammer. sledgehammer. That's what they're called. And mind you, she's laying on glass. 
Oh, yeah, she's laying on a bed of glass right there. Yeah. That's nuts. That's completely nuts. I talked to her and asked her what got her into doing the whole laying on glass and walking on glass and stuff like that. Eating glass. And she and said that when she stepped on Legos, it didn't hurt. Oh. So it just kind of told her that, hey, there's, you know, she's always had the, you know, that sideshow mentality, you know, and uh, the love uh-huh. for it. So, yeah, whenever well, she... Well, that's why, that's why your son loves her, because he loves Legos. and She can walk on them and doesn't get mad. Well, I mean, not just that, but have you have you seen her? Oh yeah, okay. absolutely. All right, well, that's her right over there. <clears throat> Where? And on your shirt. In her oh, likeness. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Actually, that was kind of funny because uh, Kat drew it and then turns around and she does her makeup very similar to that. Here, hold on a second. What what is that? That was another Verona video, but I was looking for the one where she put the skewer through her jaw, but I couldn't find it. Oh yeah, she. Uh, the, the that one and uh, the um, did she do the knife trick with her hand? No, she did that in Colombia, and I mean she's really fast at you know uh-huh. going through you know her fingers with a knife and I mean, she, um, but yeah she she will definitely be back with us in Colombia. Um, we will have a different suspension team there, um, the uh, plank team that was in Springfield and in Colombia last year. Mm-hmm. They they are they can't attend this year because they're okay. doing a, a burn and a it's burn. not yeah wow it's like what is know, that it's like Burning Man oh okay that's cool um, they call it they call it a burn I've never uh-huh. been to one I've heard they're pretty amazing um, but they go to them like all over the U S oh. so they um, of course they're tied up with doing that and I you know I can't be mad at them and this is the reason why we got to have flexibility and. You know, uh, also have more suspension teams and yeah. performances and stuff. But there'll be an announcement here before too long about how um, Verona will be playing a part in um, in the future of performances. Oh, yeah. So okay. um, it's the whole the whole delegating because um, the more I can take off of my shoulders, the better. Yeah. I mean, hence why you're for sure you're 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 helping with sales on boost, you know, that mm-hmm. that right there. And especially, um, you know, you boot like the screen says right now, booth spaces are currently available. If you're a tattoo artist or a vendor uh, in the tattoo realm, then we the, definitely want to want to hear from you. Upon r- approval of your portfolio or if we look at your stuff and if you get an invite, yeah. You know, like I I've messaged a couple artists out of a uh, well, one was out of Illinois and one was out of Dallas. And the one in Illinois, he, his work was phenomenal. And I messaged him and I said, I, I checked over your work and I just wanted to, to give you an invite uh-huh. uh, to, the, you know, to the Carnival of Ink, uh, you know, and gave him the details of what the booth entails and stuff like that. And he, uh, he was like, he was really kind of blown away because he was like, you know, I've only did one convention and um, that was being a helper. And it was for one in Texas. And I mean, you mm-hmm. know, that's a big... You know, the carnival is a, a pretty big deal to me. But, yeah. But there's there's larger events out there because, you know, we've, mm-hmm. we've only tackled Columbia and Springfield. And those those markets right there, they would not be able to uh, support like Villain Arts or Ink Masters or something like that. Yeah. And the reason why is because um, they're a smaller market. You know, mm-hmm. we, we can come in with a carnival and do 150 booths, you know, or 150 artists real easy. And we're satisfied with that. You know, because we're going to premium pick every one of these artists. Um, but like right now, we've I've been going through the whole approval. Um, we've, you know, we we we've, we've got a lot of them approved and ready to go. There's still so much more that we got to go through and, and plan them because um, it's kind of it's kind of like um, tiers. Like you know, right now we're looking at you know tier um, tier three of. Uh, of a uh, tattoo artist and that's kind of like your highest caliber of people mm-hmm. um you know like the borgs like um jeremy taylor and like tim richardson and you know joey smith and artists like that that we know that they have that that high caliber of work so you know of course we're you know they're they're accepted already and if they won an award in springfield they're already an artist that's that's being invited to columbia yeah um we are also going to go ahead and do um uh, Miss Como, uh, we're oh, changing it up a little bit. Well, I mean, we did. Miss Queen City was pretty popular. It was, it was pretty popular, other than the fact that um, 
after talking to the judges afterwards, mm-hmm. you know, I was like, you know, um, nothing against the, the female that won. Mm-hmm. Um, but the whole idea of this this contest was to not only be pinup, but to be a heavily tattooed pinup. Yeah. Um, because, you know, my aunt that I know that go, attends church every other Sunday or every Wednesday, she could go and get a pinup outfit and, and look the part. Yeah. But she does not have any tattoos. The whole yeah. point of this is I want to be able to take the best of both worlds and put them together and that one person win it because you know one of the awards or one of the prizes for it is a photo shoot a private shoot with with ernie you know with tattoo magazine yeah and if you don't have a lot of tattoos then what's the point of being in tattoo magazine it it defeats the purpose of why even in doing it so miss queen or miss columbia missouri miss como miss como she's going to be more tattooed i imagine exactly and uh we're we're changing a way that we're going to do the the hosting for it which just think radio they did a great job I'm, i'm not complaining about that but we want them to be a presence as far as what they do um because they they have just think models they have yeah. you know i don't want to have a group like them to come in and and host it and then some people feel like there's some favoritism you know how that is because yeah. there's always somebody that considers favoritism you know because they could have had a model come in that was part of that not saying that they did because they didn't but you know we got we got to protect ourselves when it comes to stuff like that so whenever they come in say hypothetically they've got a model that comes in and she ends up winning it and they're they're not only the host but they've also a judge we kind of got to look at it as what's fair so you know we're going to look at a different host and we'll you know if justin wants to be involved with it we'll have them have one of their people to be a judge Mm -hmm. along with a couple other judges so you know well you know it's 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 uh you know, it's it's you got to it just keeps everything fair. It does keep it fair. I mean, uh, you know, we we hear a lot of flack of uh, of how the tattoos are judged um, <clears throat> because, you know, we have three judges and usually Judy Parker, which uh-huh. if you don't know who Judy Parker is, I suggest you get your Google out. And I, uh, I can actually show them who Ju- Judy Parker is right now, because here in our virtual tattoo shop, we are all Judy Parker in our flash on the wall. So, yeah, Judy is. um Judy is the one who changed the game whenever it came to uh, uh, flash art. Because years ago, you would go into a tattoo studio, and every tattoo studio had the same flash art. Yeah. So, you know, the piece that you got would would have been the same piece that was on hundreds of people. You know, uh, like Lyle Tuttle said, there was a time that he tattooed like 39 Panthers in a weekend. 39 Panthers in one weekend. Yeah. So, I mean, this... She changed the game by coming in and doing, you know, a different type of a flash stuff. art. Her her fantasy, her mermaids, she's she's like really people love her for her mermaid stuff. Mm-hmm. And well, I, this was back in ninety five whenever she did this right here. Right. So I mean if you stop and think about it, I mean that's ninety five. Think about what has changed since then. You know, we you know, as far even on as far as machines in ninety five, I don't even think they had a rotary machine. I think it was all coils still at that time. That's like it's what 95 is what 23 years i don't ago? remember 95 much so <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad time let's see what else we got, <clears throat> we got. magic but, lamps and and um uh, uh, you know arabian fantasy kind of stuff well yeah wow. back back to my Look point on the uh the judging thing you know is um there there was a there was an artist artist that won an award well that artist was also on the judging panel so okay. you know we had somebody go well you know he won an award but he was on the judging panel they did not realize that while we we're up there Mm-hmm. You know, before we even start judging, we're, we're drilling the judges and being like, do you or anyone affiliated with your shop have something in this category? And if they do, that's when they got to step back and we bring an alternate judge in. Yeah. So then we keep it to where it's it's fair like that. And at one time, you know, the, the thing is, is when we do the judging for each one of the categories, I wait until the very end to start giving out the awards. Mm-hmm. We're going to change that up a little bit. Okay. Uh, we're going to be doing um, healed pieces okay. uh, during the day. All right. And then the pieces that are being judged that's done at the show will be judged at, you know, in their normal time. And the reason why is because we are getting to the point to where some of these categories have like 40, 50 people in it. And it takes a while for them to, to be judged. And I don't want people to be sitting there at 10 o'clock at night going, oh, okay, come on, you know, we want to go to the after party or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. 
I want it to where it's, you know, there's still people to be able to hang around and, and check it out and uh, they can get there at a decent time and still be able to do it. So, you know, there's there's a lot of announcements that I have to do in the next, God, in the next week. I've got um, the worst tattoo that we're starting here soon. I love that. The worst tattoo is amazing. My favorite. Um, it, 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 um, it brings out a lot of people you know to to go you know that piece you know shouldn't shouldn't have been the worst tattoo well you know that's when you enter your worst tattoo and see what kind of a network you have because it goes on voting yeah so is it popularity contest a little bit <laughs> maybe um but then again that's you what know the public thinks the worst tattoo is you know it's not all do you do you contest. think i want that responsibility of picking the worst tattoo no no, I've no already that's got, insulting I've already, I've already got enough people that hate me yeah, you know, exactly. so I mean, serious. I don't want I don't want to add to that list because, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that have horrible tattoos that are entering them in that are my friends, mm -hmm. and I can't be like, okay, well, that's the worst tattoo. Well, that's that's your buddy that you know you've known for twenty some odd years. And see, you got you got to think everything to do to be able to get beyond um, to make sure it's favor. You know, mm -hmm. make sure it's in the, in everyone's favor to where it's not favoritism. So, uh, it's 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 crazy. The more the more I do this, the more I realize that I would never do well working as a PR person. Why is that? Because I would piss everybody off. Just piss them all off. Yeah. I believe that, Joe. I feel it. But you know what? At least you identify it, and that's a good leader right there. Well, yeah, that's why I delegate people that I need. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, we had we had a judge one year that was a absolute fucking tool. I'll say that right now. Um, he was an absolute tool, pissed off a lot of people, body shamed people, um, wow. and I was upstairs. You know, I was upstairs working something else, and um, luckily, you know, rest rest in peace, um, uh, Russell James went and grabbed the microphone away from the guy, and you know, basically said, "Does anybody else think this dude's a douchebag?" Um, but you know, with that, you know, I mean, this guy was taking pictures with his iPhone. Uh huh. You know, um, here I'm thinking that this guy told me there'll be a professional photographer there to be able to take photos uh -oh. and everything. This guy was paid to do what he did. Yeah. Um, and it it kind of kind of sucked. Uh huh. Um, but there's a reason why now that I have a photographer that yep. that specializes in what photography. You know. Um, I've got Kitty who does my administration side of it, which um, not many. Pe I mean, that, that she's like what, five foot one maybe? Yeah, and, and but, terrifying. But oh yeah, she's terrifying. You don't want you don't want to cross her because um, she's she's very sweet, very loving. Mm -hmm. But whenever it comes to the matter of fact stuff, she's very matter of fact. Absolutely. Um, and having her do the check in and do the admin stuff like that, absolutely great. You know, whatever because during the day. That first day, I'm bouncing around, pulled every direction, you know, and I, yeah. it's it's stressful. It really we, is. We have this thing that we say. It's like if it's the first day, if it's before inspections, don't get a hold of Joe. Yeah, don't talk to me. Nope. Cause, don't uh, even try. Well, because it's stressful, man. I mean, very I, stressful. The, the the state inspection, which if anybody is doing an event in any city in the state of Missouri and they're allowing tattoo in it without having the state inspectors come in and inspect, shame on you. Um, but basically, you know, that state inspection re without having it, I don't get to open my doors. It's just like going to a tattoo studio and somebody, and they fail in there. They're not going to be able to open the doors. Yep. And basically that's what our show is based around is the tattoo artist. So if we don't mm -hmm. get, I mean, we had one tattoo artist, um, that his person that worked for him didn't get there on time. And he walked up to me and he said, we're, we're she's she's ass out we're not going to do it yeah so i by doing that i got my inspection and we, we we got to open somewhat on time and uh you know i i even told him and i even told her i was like hey i'm not mad at you guys it's, it's business yeah. you know so i mean bottom line is is when we say we open the doors at two on that friday we got to open it at two so everything mm -hmm. that i got to do to make sure is you know everything p's and q's you know um to you know, making sure that all the artists have their consent forms, aftercare sheets, their license displayed, you know, it's 
each booth has to be a working, legal, valid tattoo shop. Yeah, it's, it's basically like uh, if you went into a tattoo studio and that booth was getting inspected by that artist. Mm -hmm. um, imagine that times 150. Yeah, and that's why it's so stressful. Yeah, because they come in with like eight inspectors. It takes about 20 to 25 minutes to inspect each person. Wow. So when you've got one person that's dragging ass. That is a lot of time wasted. Yeah, it is. And that's why I tell everybody, don't mess with me. Don't talk to me during that day. I mean, he doesn't answer the phone. No, I won't answer the phone. I, Sometimes I, I can get a hold of him on the radio, and that's about it. But that's, yeah, that's if I'm wearing one. Yeah, that's if he's yeah. wearing one. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a, you know, most people think that, it, you know, you look at it and you're going, oh, this is, that's just easy. It's just selling a bunch of booths and getting a bunch of people in there. No, it's not. It's not that easy. If, uh, if it was, I will tell you this much. If it was easy, Everyone. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'd be bored. It's true. Think about it. Even whenever I'm dating somebody. Yep. If it's easy, then you get bored. I've seen it happen literally every single time. No, I'm serious. I mean, I, I gotta, I'm got i a type of person that you got to challenge me. Because um, if, if I'm not challenged, then uh, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm stagnant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. 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 So, the, uh, I, I think I have some videos here that we can look through um, from the carnival. Let's go ahead and we'll take a look at this. Oh, apparently I was making a post. Oh, look at that. I didn't even know it. So what do we got here? We've got, uh, this is John Wallace giving a tattoo. Oh, that was his Einstein piece. Did you see that? Yes. Um, it, it turned out, I mean, he loves Einstein. Yeah. If you go into his studio, he's got Einstein everywhere. And he was actually working on that drawing uh, probably about a good three or four weeks before the show. Because when we went in there to film it, uh, film him, that's, yeah. That was Lucas with Next Gen. Oh, there we go. Uh, that's the Plank team out of uh, Columbia, uh, which is, they, they're out of, uh, they work out of Living Canvas Tattoo. Mm -hmm. okay. And this is the Flying uh, Rock of I can't, Hickabilly. Uh, I cannot remember. I want to say it was something Dan. Um, mm. But that dude actually was pretty cool to me. I mean, he's a really cool guy. Um, as the first time I got to meet him, he showed me some other stuff that he's done, suspensions and stuff. And he's really, really talented. Of course, there's Miss Verona Fink. Yeah. Hey, you can see the, the picture right here. And, yeah. and the, the things are kind of similar there. Yeah. Okay. She's She's crazy. She's fun. That, actually, that I think that blood was from whenever she did the skewer, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. This blood right here is from whenever she stabbed herself through the chin. Oof. Oof. Yeah. What do we got here? Oh, hey, there's me and, and Cass Haley. That's not at the carnival. No, that's not at the carnival. That was just the other night at the uh -oh. outlet. <laughs> it's like, what? And there's a leg getting tattooed. Yeah, that's Matthew Starks. Um, Dreamscape Tattoo. Uh, they're out of uh, Liberty, Iowa. And what we got here? The, here's John Wallace doing some. Yeah, it's John Wallace from Next Generation Tattoo here. And um, you know, you know, there's a reason why it's Next Generation. Yeah, let me turn this down. All right, that's um, that's Stephen Montecore. Yeah. yeah, it's Montecore's piece. That's uh, Maccabee's piece that he did on him. Yeah, he just opened up his shop. That's, uh, that's underground. underground. Mm -hmm. So you were telling me about. About what? I don't know. Just a few seconds Dude, ago, yes, yeah, you're talking. You, yeah, you got. I, I got distracted. Oh no, no, ne next gen. Yeah. Um, he's a, he's a second generation tattoo artist. Oh. His dad his dad has a studio in o uh, Oklahoma, so of course next gen. There's the back of Ernie's head. Huh? That's a suspension that was done from the elbows uh, or the skin around. I guess the elbows. That would be very sensitive. Yeah. I mean, think about. It. There's not much fat in that area. Man, okay, now now people can kind of see. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not a big fan of it, and the reason why I'm not a big fan of it is because I, I would never do it. But mm -hmm. I get it, I get it because it's 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 a it's a, it's a euphoric feeling from them. Um, some of them believe it's almost spiritual, um, and they I, I I get it, I really do, I get it. Um, but I would never do it. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm glad you filmed it in Miami. Yeah, there were times where I had to look away. Yeah. Oh, there they are putting out that uh, plastic. There's, there's Clayton. DJ Digital. Oh, yeah, he's right over there. Yeah. There he is. Yep. From Torment. By the way, it reminds me, I've got their banner at home. Electro hyphen pool dot com and that's where electro pool yeah electro pool that's where you could find all of those djs now mm -hmm. clayton's the the ringleader of all that good somebody needed to all right so what do we got going on here here's some more verona i think she's about to uh hey i think she's getting ready to dump out the glass and people can see just how much glass she's actually dealing with here Okay, maybe not. Come on. Um, she's just talking at this point here. Let's see what she's saying. It's a sinful sideshow. Captain Sideshow. Yeah. She there, is just some shots of the carnival. Eh? She's uh she's pretty energetic. Yeah. All right, there's all that glass. Here, I'll make this bigger so people can see. It's quite a bit of glass. Yeah. said there will be blood and she wasn't lying no she jumps on that stuff and just like cuts her feet up she looked at me and she's like i'm going hard for you guys i was like okay you know the uh she always ups it every time oh it's so much glass it's like 30 pounds i think she said yeah Oh, she's taking her shoes off or whatever. Oh, man. Ooh, nope. Uh, that's all I got on that one. <laughs> What, sh what they do for tips is what's it, what floors me. Oh, the staples. Yeah, because um, you know, she was like, you know, bring up. You know. Oh, sorry. That's way loud. That's, uh, oh, wow, that I think I just, hell out of me. I think I just went, <laughs> man. What? Yeah, I just scared myself too. <laughs> I think I just, mm, it depends. The, the whole tipping of what, you know, on that is crazy. I didn't get to see him do that. Now you will. Here. I mean, he actually escapes from it? Yeah. Here, you know what we're going to do? I can... Uh-oh. I don't know. I thought I'd be able to put us in front of it, but... I'm just moving it around at this point. This is pretty freaky, man. So he has to dislocate his shoulders to be able to do this. I would doubt it. Would not doubt it. And he's, he's about to do it. He's about to dislocate his shoulders.
All right, here we go. Now we're in front of it. And there we go. Uh, so she, she gets this thing pretty damn tight and like belts it mm -hmm. and everything. And ninja kicks apparently. So that's cool. That's the only way he can Here point. Yeah. I like that he's wearing a kilt. That's actually really friggin' comfortable. I went and tried to buy a kilt once, but man, those things are so expensive. I was like, I'll just buy pants. Look, so he, he went and got the biggest dude that he could find out of the crowd to like basically make sure that this thing is as tight as it could be. I think <clears throat> that Captain Sideshow, I think he's out of uh, Oklahoma somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Oklahoma City. Or maybe Tulsa. I don't know. I don't know either. Oh, man. He is about to literally bust out of a straight jacket. And there's no faking this. This isn't something that you can, like, fake. Right. You know, this there's is no Velcro on the straps to be able to be like, hey, you know. Mm -hmm. No, this is just, you have to. Ugh. Oh, he's he's getting it, little by little. Oh, ooh, it's getting to the part where his shoulders about to slip. Look how red his face is getting. Oh. Oof. I, I mean, just getting to that point alone. Yeah, it's just you like, know. So hard. It's like his arm just pops <laughs> yeah, out of nowhere. Like, you know? uh, hi. I'm just in suspense watching this thing. I don't even have anything to say. It's just, I can't believe he did that. It's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, look, he's just all ready. He's just like, oh my God, I can't believe I just did that. All right, let's see what, let's see what other things we got here. Got, uh, here's this guy I know. Oh, hi. Hey, there's Kitty. We were talking about her. Yeah. She's walking them back there with the box. Basically just going through this footage, raw footage. I haven't really organized this one yet. There's everybody just getting started to set up for the beginning of the uh, evening. Oh, that's yeah, that's when the award ceremony just started. There's Brand, uh, Brandy Owensby, or um, I want to say it's Owensby, tattoo artist. Mm -hmm. There's Kitty by the awards there's Joe and Kat and Kat, John and John Joey and I don't know who is in the middle I can't see because I'm in the way move Joe come on Joe get out yeah. oh wait oh wait. it's Kendall yeah it was one, the first time that Kendall actually helped us judge well I will say this 
Cat Spencer is a huge help when it comes to doing these things. Um, normally, I have him and Weird Harold to kind of lean to, like I did in Columbia and also in uh, Springfield the year before. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you, Cat is. Cat wants to see this grow. Yeah. He wants to see this be something that, you know, potentially is going to be bigger than what it already is, mm -hmm. you know, and to have a person like of, of his status to be able to say, hey, you know, I'm I'm here to help you. Um, it says a lot. There's Drew Bryan from The Missing Ink. There's Cat over there. Yeah. That was uh, Joey gave this guy a tattoo. I remember that very clearly. Yeah, yeah. And there's Tim Richardson is sitting down over there. Um, there's so many like artists that come with the main artist that is it's um as as Jeremy Taylor. I mean, he's got national recognition for tattoos. Oh, Jeremy Taylor is like from the Carnival in Como. Uh, he took best in show in that. Yeah. All right, and here is one of the evenings. I don't know what category that is. Well, by the looks of it, looks like it's probably horror. Yeah. And that would have been day one. Mm -hmm. It's pretty sad when I can remember those from what day I do them. No, that's actually really good. Well, because I kind of keep them the same kind of uh, format per se yeah well just looking at those tattoos you're doing the murder tattoos they're all on the leg though maybe, maybe well, it's a leg category I uh, know because uh, that's a leg sleeve and oh okay and, oh yeah and I remember Jay Borg was the one who had the oh god the nice that thing was like all the whole side of the, the leg bio, bio mac yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, that's uh, that's Wildcat, our cat from, um, he goes by Wildcat. He's out of West Plains. Yeah. The thing that I love is to see the uh, tattoo artists kind of mingle around, and then Sunday you'll see them all getting tattooed by different tattoo artists. Yeah, it's souvenirs. You know, well, I mean, like Addison Wines, the one that does all the fucking badass lettering and shit mm -hmm. that should totally be designing metal band logos. Um, <laughs> dude's phenomenal. Um, I, we were in uh, St. Robert's uh, meeting up with Kat so Batman could get tattooed on his chest. And uh, Kat's like, I'm getting ready to go to Addison here in a couple weeks to go get some work done. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah. He goes, I love his work. You know? Nice. And... Uh, like, well, me and Batman are going to go be seeing um, Kendall and Jay Borg before too long because my neck is getting tattooed. No. What are you getting? Oh, are you getting the JBE logo? My logo, yeah. Wow. It's the old vintage mic with bat wings off of it. Mm -hmm. That's going to be cool. Yeah. It's going to be painful. It's time. Yeah. It's not like I'm going to, you know, become a an evangelist or something. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, you are an ordained minister. Well, that's different, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it. I, I've already pretty much accepted the fact that this is my. Uh, this is my career path that I'm taking. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that's horror. I think that might be um, small, no medium color. Could be medium color. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, because that's... There we are. I was just pointing. I was showing him where we are on the thing. Oh, who, me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're over there. Yep, there we is. It's pretty, pretty neat. Yeah, we're talking about behind-the-scenes tattoo convention stuff. If you're just now tuning in and joining us, this is a uh, background behind us is um, what Joe believes is medium color. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I mean... I know it's not portrait, because, yeah, that's got to be medium color, because I remember that that lady had a, a medium color piece. Are they going to do the handoff at uh, We are Columbia? doing it in Columbia, and the reason why we yes. didn't do it in Springfield is because um, 
people, you know, we we we're gonna create a better newsletter for everybody, um, okay. because that that right there alone is kind of what uh, I've had people come up to me, th- you know, Saturday when we doing the handoff, and I'm like, we were gonna do it last night, but nobody wanted to do it. Oh well, you should have mm-hmm. told me. Well, do you want me to go around to each and every one of you guys and tell you? Yeah, we're gonna have to I give mean, them, uh, flyers with all the stuff on it, I guess. Well, um, that's fine. It's it's okay. I mean, we'll give. Uh, I mean, if you stop and think about it. We've got the um, uh, Saturday special tattoo uh-huh. that we you know we're gonna have to go around Friday and and get topics and then draw it and then we can actually put it on on the the letter that we print off and leave it at every booth in the morning before they come in. They can say, oh, well, this is the category. You know, instead of having to run around and tell everybody, you know, we've got it already set up. So it's it's a, it's a matter of just little things. It's just the little, you know, the little things that you can do to make it better. Yep. It's just those little things, girl. That's right. Yep. Sorry, I had to move that a little bit. All right. Um, So what do we got going on here? I think that that was the last one of that. And now they're they're discussing to see. uh, Maybe it wasn't the last one. I swear he's like my dad. We have the same. Uh-huh. <laughs> it is. You guys kind of stand the we, same. We stand the same. We have the same kind of gestures. The, um, yeah, he's he's just a good guy. I mean, he really is. You should see the truck that he drives to work every day. What kind of truck does he got? It's like a '66 Chevy pickup, step side. Nice. Um, and it's not like all hot rotted out. It's like um, pretty much original, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's because I, I, we were there the last time, and I was like, "You just leave this truck parked here?" And he's like, "No, I drive it every day." And I'm like, well, "Okay." I mean, it's short bed, step side, nice looking truck. Everyday driver, I yeah. like that. Well, we're gonna start doing this every Tuesday, Tattoo Tuesdays. Uh, you know, this this right here will be, you know, today we're just kind of going over. Uh, and getting some information out there. There's so much more stuff that we've got to cover mm-hmm. between now and Columbia. And we're going to be having uh, interviews with tattoo artists coming up. We have we have to go by the the, the tattoo coven. We're going to be talking to those. We'll be actually you'll probably ladies. have you'll have footage for to work on over the weekend if you wanted to with them. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, we'll have next gen again. Um, he's I got to go talk to him in the next couple of days. Um, there's a couple others I think that are uh, David James is coming from Springfield I think too as well um, there's um, Austin Bounds um, he, he's going um, trying to think who else is planning on attending Columbia um, the difference between Springfield and Columbia is night and day yeah well you know it has that really great feel in Columbia where like it, it's like camp you know what I mean yeah. It's like everybody just, it's like a big family reunion. Well, oh, hey, look at, yep. those are nice tattoos. And yep. th- th- it's a, 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 a camp where family comes and everybody just kind of has a good time. Weird Harold <coughs> that last time, it, wasn't he? <coughs> well, one year he was <coughs> basically in his skivvies because it. No, that was some, Springfield last year. That was Springfield. Yeah. Wait, no, no, no. He, he swam in the, uh, the. Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't him. That was his guy that works with him. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I didn't see that. I only heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, apparently, there there was more than one hot tub. Oh, yeah. This hot tub's great. And it wasn't... It was the fountain in the, in the lobby. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, camp. Thank you, Kennedy. Appreciate that. <coughs> I wish I would have got it on film. That would have been great. <coughs> There was a lot of uh, antics, let's just say that, yeah. in Columbia. Well, the hotel is right above the convention center in Columbia. It's all attached, all affiliated. It, yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was a, <clears throat> it was a fun time. I'm uh, excited about Columbia this year. Because, I mean, last year was the first year that we did it. Um, Columbia never had a tattoo convention there before, so it was perfect. Uh, that's best overall female. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, Columbia is definitely 
uh, I think um, much more laid back. Um, it's not as stressful for me. Yeah, um, I can see that. Well, the reason why is because you know Springfield's my hometown, you know, and I always want to do Springfield proud because you know that's where I'm from. <clears throat> but you know, you still have the the people that you know don't want to see you succeed, and they're in your hometown. Um, but when you go to a town like Columbia. <clears throat> Nobody knows your Nobody name. knows who I am. They just know the name of the show, and everybody loved it. So. You gotta go <laughs> where nobody knows your name. Do, 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 do. Cheers. Yeah, I know. Okay. So, <coughs> so which category would you say that this is? This is best overall female. Oh, okay. Yeah. What I think's amazing is, uh, like, the, the one that was right before her... <coughs> Which is uh, Shelly, um, yeah. Shelly Spencer, which is Cat Spencer's wife. Um, when she's dressed normal, because my understanding is she's got a pretty professional career. Okay. Um, when she is dressed uh, normal, like a normie. Yeah, you don't you don't see any of that. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, she she fits in the whole professional world of it. You know, and if you notice right here, see how the artist switched. Yeah, right there. The reason why is because. Best overall female, Cat could not judge in it because his wife was in it. <clears throat> um, so now we're doing, this is best overall male. Uh, the one in the middle is uh, Drew Bryan from uh, The Missing Ink out of KC. Um, and of course, you know, John Wallace from Next Generation Tattoo. Um, but yeah, that's the best overall male category there. So, you know, when you see the artists or the judges switch out, that right there is basically us making sure that it's legit and fair because uh, they're not judging anyone. You know, I mean, Kat, I think Cat could only judge maybe three categories. And the reason why is because um, the, his booth partner, uh, Bobby Widem, um, had some entered in a lot of categories, you yeah. know. So, I mean, Cat being cat be making it fair he's like you know i can only do this category in this category this category you know so <clears throat> it just helps so is this best overall male or is best this... overall male okay i'm trying to think is wait a minute is that the guy that actually has yep that's the that's the j board piece yeah. that was done on the leg that is which my understanding is that guy is like he has a lot of biomechanical and that's pretty much what's on the side of the leg is a biomech piece wow <clears throat> and honestly that's like most of his leg that is a lot i'm surprised he didn't like two days yeah he I tattooed mean, on that for two days chris hansen got that darth vader and he almost went into shock and he he like oh it was well i mean he he was under the the needle for how many hours like 10 hours or something no he was eight eight hours he told me eight yeah and he was and it was packing in the black the shin bone on the Mm. shin bone on the shin bone yeah yeah that's that's you know um i've 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 had some done on my legs where it feels in a different spot you know Uh of your body um but i've never had anything done on my shin bone um, pretty sounds- close to it, but yeah, I mean, I, I know that that would hurt my side. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I've got some meat on my bones, but I'm still, I'm telling you, that side piece, side piece hurt. <clears throat> but I will tell you, close to the quick of your finger. Yeah, mm, does that hurt too? Mm, I thought they were going to have to hold my hand down. Like, did it feel like they were ripping your fingernail off? Um, it was probably, it was, uh, the feeling was like it was burning. Mm. You know, yeah, that sucks. <clears throat> well, I mean, I've got my my upper knuckles done, and and that was it was okay. It wasn't bad, but that lower portion, I, well, I think a lot of it was the fact that I was not ready. You know, I just got kind of thrown in the chair and was like, "Hey, here, let's go ahead and do these real quick." <clears throat> so you know, I went ahead and did it. And the first one, I'm like, "Oh, well, I'm committed. I might as well go ahead and get this over with." What you got here, homie? Okay, well, there's, yep, yeah. <clears throat> that's Mike Devine in the middle from uh, uh, Divine Studios, and of course Cat and then Joey Smith. Um, 
Joey Smith, uh, that dude has got so many stories as far as uh, being involved with conventions. <clears throat> yeah. He used to work with a group um, that set conventions up for Lyle Tuttle. Really? So, yeah, his to hear him sit and talk about Lyle is... You know, and then also losing him. I mean, it affected him. That's, that's just like, it was like he lost a family member there, you know? I mean, <clears throat> um, and then, you know, of course, hearing the stories from Judy and anybody else that was involved, I, I, I really regret the fact that I never got the chance to meet Lyle. Um, but what my goal is, is just like in Springfield, we had, you know, Judy Parker, we had Jackie Grisham. Um, and a lot of people were like, I don't know who the hell those people are. And I'm like, if you're in the tattoo industry and you don't know who these people are, um, then you need to go and do your history. <clears throat> yeah. You know, it's sort of like uh, Shanghai Kate. Uh, Shanghai Kate works side by side with Sailor Jerry. So, yeah, Sailor Jerry is not just a liquor. Yeah. Um, it, it, you know, an actual artist. And she worked side by side with him, you know, during the time when no females <clears throat> were tattooing. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, we're talking like a 50, 60 year veteran of tattooing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and if you get a chance to meet some of these individuals like that, Jack Cox, another one, Illust yeah, the illustrated man, <laughs> the illustrated man. Um, He's the first <clears throat> tattoo artist in Kansas City, is first, that right? first and still running. Um, and he's covered. Th this man is covered, <clears throat> and every tattoo is a different story. You know, I mean, some of the, he's got pieces done by some of the most legendary artists, um, you know, and there's a story with it everywhere. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, I asked him, Every I was like, which them. which one's your first tattoo? And I mean, he knew exactly where it was right here and he even told me who he was with. And, you know, it was a guy that I apprenticed under and I mean, he started telling me the story. And, you know, it's 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 one of those things that it's important that I think, you know, you heard the phrase that. Um, those who fail history are doomed to repeat it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, this is one of those things that I believe if you don't get the history behind it, then you lose a lot of the meaning. <clears throat> because, you know, like Joey, he bought um, he bought some pieces from Jack Cox. And he's like, I don't even know if I'll ever tattoo these pieces. But, you know, I they're mine. Yeah, you know, he's got, <clears throat> he has a machine from Lyle. Um, he's got machines from all different you know, type of artist because he's another person who loves the history of it. And yeah, that's, that's a good thing. I'm not sure exactly which. Does it look like I'm bitching there or something? No, I think you're just like talking about paperwork or something. You're like holding it's like charades. Let's see what else is going on. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, here's some more. Is this? Best? Oh, that's that mandala piece that <coughs> was insane. It looks pretty huge. Well, it went from her knee. Remember, mm. Sarah, Sarah was like she loved the piece or something because it was a mandala, but it had some kind of like a a, a country type theme that was up top. Oh. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember the style, but it was a mandala piece. But it was like from her knee all the way up to you know the, her upper thigh area. And I'm gonna tell you right now, mandala pieces. You know, I've had a lot of people be like, "Oh, that's just dot work." Well, dude, I'm telling you, think about the time. It takes a lot of time. To, to yeah. Do that. And, you know, to do it right and to make it look even, <coughs> that's a lot of hard work. Well, yeah, it is. Oh, look, here's this guy talking to Joey again. Yeah. He was real happy with that guy at the end of the mm -hmm. night. <clears throat> you know, that was April, and I'm still wearing a beanie. Yep. That's right. It's kind of what I like to do. Now you're wearing a normal hat. Oh, normal look at Wu-Tang. You know, Wu-Tang's for the children. That's what they say, yeah. It is. I wouldn't lie to you. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Hey, Jimmy the Hot Pocket, how's it going, bud? I haven't seen you in a little while. It's nice to have you here. 
Jimmy the Hot Pocket. <clears throat> it's been a while, yeah. It's been a while since I've seen Jimmy the Hot Pocket. Well, I think we're going to probably need to end this one here before too long. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Um, we'll be back, uh, what, Tuesday noon? Yeah. Now, now that we got an idea of what we're going to do? Yeah. Okay. Now that we know what we're going to do, Tuesdays at <clears throat> noon, you guys can check us out, and we'll be talking about the Carnival of Ink and if you know, tattoos. And yeah, if you know of an artist in your area, which I know you guys are like viewers here are global yeah. compared to you know our local, mm-hmm. um, but if you know an amazing artist <clears throat> that needs to be recognized, that should be um, uh, attending a tattoo convention, yeah. Um, the one thing I will tell you is my booth fees are probably the most inexpensive ones out of all of it. Cause I'm not trying to gig the, uh, the, the tattoo artist. I'm trying to, you know, make it be where they're, it's profitable for them. And it's also easier for them to get into it. Um, if there is, you know, an artist out there, let Donnie know, um, you know, Pass us a link to them or something. You know, I mean, I know that there's many different avenues with their Instagram or their Facebook or, or, or their website. Pass the information over here to Donnie. Yeah. And uh, we'll get them looked at and see what we can do to get them in there. Yeah. And you you can have them send a, a message just to uh, Donnie at CarnivalOfInc.com. Yep. And then I'll get that and uh, I'll send them over the paperwork and tell them all the information and stuff. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's actually one of my favorite events and i'm glad that it's happening in more than one place now and it's always it's always growing man this is exciting There's it's, a lot of good things coming up this year you know it went from starting out doing it as a you know once in a, once a year kind of thing and you know doing a bunch of work in like four months and and I'm putting it together and getting it over with and then but now it's gotten to the point to where it's it's my full-time job um and it is you know, a full time job. Um, right now, I'm sitting with my phone on mute because I know I'm getting messaged by people asking questions. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, the one thing I will tell people, even artists that have never attended a convention, um, there's no dumb answers or no 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 dumb questions. Mm-hmm. Um, and don't feel stupid by saying, "Well, hey." You know, what do I need to do to sign up this? Don't feel, I mean, that's where a lot of people, you got to get past that, that yeah. fear. We got all the info <clears throat> for you. Yeah. It's I mean, and, and, um, I've, I had a, an artist message me at one o'clock in the morning Cool. and, uh, say, you know, I'm sorry to bother you, but this is kind of my time to, you know, wind down and, and get things taken care of. And I'm like, ironic. That's what I'm doing. You know, cause I already got my boy in bed. I've already did my emails. Now I'm just sitting here working on stuff cause it's quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, but they had a couple questions and they were to them huge dumb questions to them yeah. but to me it was like okay well that's a simple question let's get it you know taken care of and you know it's 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 easy I mean it really is easy to get to get signed up you just got to be able to put all your ducks in a row and then you know <clears throat> not, just, not just that but to be yeah. able to be uh, uh, an outstanding artist because you know we we uh, we changed it from Springfield to Columbia to be invite or by approved portfolio <clears throat> and the reason why is because not saying that the artists that we had were horrible <clears throat> because that's not the case no. the case is is some of these artists that are winning <clears throat> we need fresh meat for them to compete with yeah and the reason why is because they they are getting to that point where I mean like Tim Richardson uh, Duke can win like six seven awards in, in a weekend you know and people are like his oh, work you is know. just that good we, he, but that is that is the case his work is that good <clears throat> but I want to get more people in there to where it raises his competitive spirit yeah you know like Jeremy Taylor to be able to I want to see him pacing in front of the stage like before he won best in show. I want to see him pacing in front of the stage again. And the reason why is because that means they up their game. They up their mm-hmm. caliber of work. Um, and if they do that, there's no there's no limit of where they can go. And, of course, we just want the best of the best. We want people to yeah. walk away and go, I got this done at the carnival. And everybody be like, hey, did you get that done at the carnival? Right. Instead of, oh, my God, did you get that done at the carnival? 
you yeah. know, we, we don't want that. We want we want people to walk away with a great experience. You know, um, you can't please everyone, but you, you can take what things that we're not pleasing to some people and learn from them and, and adapt. Then that's what we do. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for tuning in and watching. Thanks for uh, Chronic Warrior 17, uh, Jimmy the Hot Pocket, Tease Nuts, um, <laughs> Okie Doke. That's his name, Tease Nuts. <laughs> Tease Nuts. Tease Nuts. <coughs> uh, I'll see you guys, what is tomorrow, Wednesday? Oh, yeah. hey, Dr. Lobotomy's Insanity Cinema is tomorrow, so get ready for that. I don't know which old-ass movie that we're going to be watching, but it will it's be gonna boring. It's going to be old-ass. It's going <clears> to <throat> be boring and old and... <clears throat> I'm glad that you'll be watching it with me. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's if that's not enticing, I don't know what is. Yeah. All right, I'll see you guys later from our uh, peace, our tattoo shop right here in the in the internet. <laughs>